Hello, this is Hiroshi Nishimaki. In this session, I will be presenting the evolution of quality infrastructure investment in Japan. In 2019, the G20 set forth the G20 principles for quality infrastructure investment, which is a set of voluntary non-binding principles that reflect the G20's strategic direction and aspiration for quality infrastructure investment. These QII principles built on the consensus that infrastructure is a driver of economic prosperity and that in quality infrastructure contributes to maximizing the positive impacts of those investments. Here are six principles adopted at the G20 meeting. Number one, sustainable development. Number two, economic efficiency. Number three, environmental considerations. Number four, disaster resilience. Number five, social considerations. And number six, governance. In this presentation, I will review the evolution of these six principles in Japan, since I believe these principles are product of history and are born out of social necessities. I'll be dividing the evolution story into three phases. First, rapid urbanization and economic growth in the phase one up to 1973. Second, more moderate growth during phase two up to 1990. And the third phase of struggles through low economic growth after 1990. The phase one period of Japan is characterized by rapid economic development on average of 9.1 annual GDP growth and rapid urbanization. From 1950 to 1980, the urban population increased from nearly 30% to 60% in Japan. In the case of the Tokyo metropolitan area, it has grown from 10 million to 30 million in population size. After the war, productivity growth was hindered by the lack of adequate infrastructures. Car ownership showed geometric increases, but the roads in Japan were in poor condition at the time. As this chart indicates, the government of Japan acknowledged the importance of public infrastructure investments as a driver for economic growth and dramatically increased the budget for public works. However, putting money in public works is not enough to effectuate the principle one of infrastructure-led growth. It is necessary to have an effective planning framework to combine technology, land, finance, in a timely manner. Alarmed by the pace of urbanization, the central government of Japan undertook a major revision of urban planning law in 1968. The new urban planning framework included two crucial components in addition to the conventional land use control plan. These two additional components were setting up of the boundary of urban development within cities shown as the first item in the figure and the establishment of an urban infrastructure plan accompanied by the corresponding capital investment plan. The government created specialized public agencies such as public housing corporations and public highway corporation to develop domestic technological base concentrating resources into these agencies proved to be efficient, particularly to assist smaller local governments. Land readjustment is another factor that contributed to infrastructure-led growth. Japanese local governments utilize land readjustment to generate public space in a democratic manner without resorting to forceful land acquisitions. There have been some 120,000 projects undertaken to reorganize 3,700 square kilometer of urban areas and built 40,000 kil kilometer of planned roads. Lastly, but not least, postal savings and the transit-oriented development played a critical roles in the infrastructure-led growth. Postal saving programs provided a useful way to collect money that the government could lend for critically needed public infrastructure, infrastructure projects, especially when the private banking system was still underdeveloped. The private railway companies developed most of the commuting railways and the suburban housing estates together, relieving the public sector from urban transport investments 
while serving to uh, solve housing shortages. Let us now move on to the phase two. The oil crisis in 1973 put a sudden break on the rapid economic growth in Japan. Average GDP growth rate reduced to 4.2% per annum during this phase. Together with inflation, backlashes of from a rapid economic growth started to surface. Instigated by serious industrial pollution incidents such as Minamata, during the 70s, the public was becoming more and more aware of environmental impacts of infrastructure development. QII2 environmental consideration was spearheaded by pioneering local governments. The city of Kawasaki mandated the environmental impact assessment in 1976 by a local audience, while the central government finally introduced the environmental impact assessment law in 1997. Now, let us now turn to phase three that started in early 1990s. Massive infrastructure development during the 1960s and 1970s also meant that massing aging of infrastructures simultaneously. As you see in this chart, most infrastructures in Japan are expected to age over 50 years by 2033. Anticipating a sharp increase in maintenance and replacement costs, the Japanese government started to emphasize infrastructure maintenance and the mainstream of life cycle costing as represented in second QII principles. Then, there was a tunnel incident at Sasago in 2012, causing nine fatalities due to the collapse of ceiling panels. The cause of the incident was attributed to a lack of maintenance for minor but important parts, the bolts that held the heavy ceiling panels. Alarmed by the Sasago incident, government acted promptly to establish the Interministerial Coordination Committee for Promotion of Measures Against Aging Infrastructures in 2013. The committee adopted the national strategy for longevity of infrastructures in the same year. Infrastructure longevity plans required every public agency or local government to inspect their infrastructure as assets and establish an overall longevity action program with prioritization. As of 2020, longevity plan were completed for 92% out of 1,824 entities for bridges, 100% out of 712 entities for tunnels, 99% out of 60 facilities for dams. All the related agencies are now in the second phase of the five-year inspection cycle. Based on the inspection results, some 70,000 bridges and 4,000 tunnels were designed, designated for rehabilitation with the completion rates of 21% and 37% respectively. Now let us now turn to QII6, improving governance. In the aftermath of the economic bubble bursting in 1990, there were a series of corruption and collusion scandals in Japan. To, to rebuild the public trust, the government started to reform the bidding process by introducing a comprehensive bidding evaluation process. Comprehensive evaluation is basically a two envelope bidding system of price and technological proposals. It was first introduced in 1998 to increase transparency in contractor selection while assuring quality. A key turning point was the year 2005 when the act on promoting quality assurance in public works came into effect. To improve the governance of the planning process of the public works, in 2003, the government issued the guideline on public involvement procedures in the planning phase of the public work projects. The guideline aimed at the establishment of technical and social accountabilities by presenting the several alternative plans to be examined by both experts and stakeholders and calling for extensive public opinion uh, feedbacks in public works. The Tokyo metropolitan area had long established its expressway network plan back in 1960s. 
consisting of three ring roads and nine radio ways. The ring roads faced stiff opposition from the communities in the corridor for fear of air and noise pollution, as well as the division of the communities. The government had announced an official suspension of the western section of the central ring road in 1978. The restarting of the projects had to wait till 1990 for the development of shield, shield tunneling technology that enabled switching the expressway from the elevator to the underground. Improvement in social accountability by adopting a public in involvement system served promptly the progress of the ring road development. Now, the long-awaited three ring roads are now nearing the completion. By 2024, all the ring roads are expected to open for full connection. Because of its natural conditions, uh, Japan is subject to frequent natural disasters, including earthquakes and tsunamis. During this phase, Japan suffered from two large-scale large earthquakes, the Great Hanshin Awaji earthquake in 1995 and the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Experience from Hanshin earthquake enhanced the preventive measures in infrastructure standards and management. Government revised the seismic standards twice after the incident and undertook the structural reinforcement of the elevated road facilities. For water supply, local governments also started to adopt earthquake resistant ductile pipes with interlocking joints. Population aging is one of the most pressing issues for Japanese society today. Increasingly, infrastructure designs are required to incorporate more social consideration for the aged. The population older than 65 sharply increased from 10% in 1985 to 28% in 2018. The number is expected to increase even further to become nearly 40% by 2065. Against this background, government has adopted the compact city policy to downsize urbanized areas for more sustainable development and now promotes universal design principles to improve accessibility of urban transport and other facilities for society's vulnerable segments with wheelchair slopes and elevators. Now, takeaway point. Experiences in Japan show that high quality infrastructures contribute to economic growth and reduce life cycle costs and create resilience against disasters for sustainable development. In addition to technological innovations, a comprehensive institutional framework incorporating environmental and social consideration, as well as a transparent, inclusive governance structure is the foundation for the development of quality infrastructures. Thank you.